Okay, everybody, it's Michael E. Cullen II. And I'm Sesame and Carta from the All Too Real 2 podcast. We're passionate about movies, TV, and pretty much all things pop culture. Dive into the chaos of failed sitcoms, direct-to-video sequels, and the quirky realms of cinema and TV. Join us every Thursday for your dose of All Too Real 2 entertainment. We'll guide you through debates like whether Howard the Duck qualifies as a superhero. Ponder if Larry the Cable Guy could be the new rock or Schwarzenegger. Discover if some shows and movies should have stayed in the cutting room. Ever heard of a sitcom featuring that dictator with the funny mustache? Well, we watched it. We're dedicated to unraveling the peculiarities of pop culture, sometimes with awesome guests. So, if you're into the eccentric world of pop culture, listen and subscribe to All Too Real 2. Available wherever you find podcasts and on Age of Radio. The last four months have been an adjustment for me. So many things have happened um, since September, new job opportunities, blossoming relationship, and the highlight of it all, uh, one of the many highlights from 2023 was being able to have my facial feminization surgery, which affirms my gender and which has helped me so much in my mental health. And despite these anti-trans bills that are being passed, being revoked, and and being thrown at us, we're still going to get our affirming care because it helps us to live. It is a life-saving measure. And for those of you that are listening that don't believe that, fuck you and the horse you rode on. That's all I'm going to say. If you are against trans care, fuck you and the horse you rode on. Plain and simple. In this adjustment period, I've reconnected with myself even more. Um, Just this past week, I was looking in the mirror as I was showering, going to bed, and my hair has grown since then. And I was, you know, Styling my hair, doing my hair care, doing my skin care. And I glanced at my side profile in the mirror. And I said to myself, who is this woman? And I began to look at myself, examine my facial features, examine my jawline, my nose, my cheeks, forehead. and. I fell in love with what I saw even more. The facial feminization process takes about six months to a year for you to see what I like to call full results because the face is still healing over that time and you have to really take care of yourself during that time. You have to eat well-balanced diets, rest properly, limit your stress, limit your nicotine intake, limit your alcohol intake. Now, me, your girl, I cannot go without my cannabis. So for the first few months of healing, instead of smoking, I was um, doing edibles and um, not doing nicotine. And once I was able to clear to smoke, um, I started doing hemp wraps. Hemp wraps. Um, I do cones and, of course, I do the bowl. But I miss my marijuana and now being able to smoke weed again. I'm happy. But one of the major adjustments was not being able to do hormones two weeks prior and for a couple of weeks after the facial feminization surgery. I was able to start back on hormones and that was a major adjustment. It was like I had started hormones all over again. And you have to be prepared after facial feminization for a roller coaster of emotions You're going to have that excitement. You're going to have that afterglow. But you will also have moments to where you will question if you made the right decision. And I went through that period. I went through looking at myself and I thought to myself, Yannick, what have you done? Are you sure you did the right thing? And I'm like, Girl, 
you fought long and hard for this. You went to therapy. You left South Carolina. You went through hell and high water in church and in religion for being trans. Bitch, you made the right decision. And I began to look at how much happier I am. I have more peace in my mind. I love myself even more because now I'm able to affirm the woman that I am. And I'm so happy. Over the course of the last few months, when I was when I was able to start applying makeup again, I started to play around with different highlighting and contouring techniques. Started looking at different products, different highlighters, and all those different things. And I've been experimenting with different looks, looking at YouTube and looking at different looks that I can play with now that my facial structure has been modified. It affirms me now. I oftentimes get frustrated in this process of healing. Sometimes I have, I still have my days of dysphoria and I recognize that I am still healing. I can feel the healing in my jawline. I still have a little bit of swelling. It's still healing, of course. And I use my mouth day in and day out because of the work that I do. And of course, bringing you grade A content. In this healing process, it gets frustrating sometimes. Because with my jawline, I'm like, okay, look, I want to be able to do my job, sing without, you know, my jaws getting tired, but it comes along with the territory. It's also frustrating now trying on different hair pieces, different wigs, and I envision what I want it to look like. And I will sit there and tease my hair, work my makeup, work the wig, work the style. And I sit and look in the mirror. I take note of what I'm looking at because I recognize I look different than before. While I'm getting ready now, since I've had facial feminization, my mind goes back to when I first started my drag career in 2010 and how my drag mother at the time would show me how to apply makeup, give me various tips. But also, I remember the joy of being able to be Brigitte, which was the stage name to be the woman that was inside that I knew was there all along. And that's really what really helped me see that I was not a cisgender male, but a transgender woman. And I started doing my research. I started following various YouTubers at the time. This was like 2010. At the time we had uh, Diamond Styles. Um, Aeon Far, aka Brianna Jenkins. So many people out there. Um, the late Jahira. Oh my gosh, so many people. The late Monica Roberts. And it was through them and through ballroom community later on in 2014 that I was able to meet other trans people and get the language and learn about what being trans is like. What trans is, what trans isn't. My mind went back through all of the balls that I went through. Walking Butch Queen up in pumps. Giving an androgynous, non-binary Grace Jones flair. Because I went through a period. When I say non-binary, I did go through a period to where I identified as non-binary. Because I was still figuring out my own identity. And everything came full circle for me as I ventured into therapy. And now having facial feminization surgery. 
has been a life-saving and a life-giving event for me. The morning of the surgery, I finally cried because I knew that I was finally getting something that I wanted since I was a wee child. Some of my frustration in the healing process does come from the ongoing results, the ongoing shift, the ongoing change, the ongoing healing. And I have to catch myself daydreaming, which nothing wrong with it, but I have to catch myself daydreaming about what I'm going to look like by September 2024. And I'm excited about how everything is going to settle and what the final results are going to be later on in September. Now, I am going to get my nose repierced. I do know that much. I have a couple of ideas for piercings that I want to do because I miss my nose ring. That was another adjustment. Missing my nose ring. I got my nose ring in 2022. I had just reconnected with the deconstruction of Christianity. And I said, I'm going to go ahead and get my nose pierced. Fuck people's opinions. And I got it. However, of course, because of facial feminization, I had to get rid of the nose piercing. And I threw the nose ring away. So this year for September, I'm going to get another nose piercing. It will mark a year since I've had facial feminization surgery and I'm going to do something that I want. I'm excited even for how I'm rediscovering my angles. I'm falling in love with me wholly and I'm excited. I'm very excited. One of the many adjustments now is the response from the male gaze and from others now that I've had facial film um, from my family members, from my colleagues, from my close circle. Um, During Christmas, my, my best friend was here and we were all watching TV and we were watching some of our old videos from church drag performances and looking at some of our old pictures. And my best friend looks at me and he says, damn, Yannick, your surgeon did great work. He's like, you look like a totally different person. You look great. He was like, I can tell that you're happy as well. You're smiling more in your pictures. Now, granted, I, I can smile wider than I can a few months ago. I have really been smiling. I look at myself in the mirror during the recording of this video and podcast. I'm looking at myself in the screen as I record and I'm like, girl, you look fabulous, darling. I can't wait to continue this journey in getting um, laser hair removal and electrolysis done. So if y'all want to contribute, y'all please hit that link tree link or hit my cash app, Yannick T Music. Or just support the um, OnlyFans, you know. I, 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 I'm so excited about living and affirming my womanhood. Fuck the opposition. Fuck what everybody says. I'm finally happy. And even my uncle and I were talking and I sent him some pictures from my outings and things. He's like, you look good. He said, you look good. He's like. I'm, I'm, it's, it's, it's an era of pride and joy, yet there's curiosity. And that's something that my uncle and I, my pops and I are still working on. Our relationship is growing and it's on the men and I'm happy right now. I'm happy and I'm grateful for all parties that are involved in that. And in terms of the male gaze, now that I've had facial feminization, I recognize that 
I fit certain standards of what people deem as beautiful. I was beautiful before that, and I'm still beautiful even after facial fam. However, I, I, and I'm not being, I'm not using pretty privilege or using possibility privilege when I say this, but I notice now since I go to the store sometimes, um, I have my face showing, I get cat called and it's worse. <laughs> the creepy behavior has increased and it's, it's annoying. It's annoying. It really is. And that's the other thing that I already knew was going to happen. The unwanted attention sometimes. Even having people that had nothing, that wanted nothing to do with me before facial film. Now they're wanting to like be in my face and talk to me. I'm like this. If you can talk to me, then you can't talk to me now. What was wrong with me then? But also making sure that I don't become the mean girl that I've talked about in previous episodes. It has been a humbling experience. And I want to say this to those of you that are looking into getting facial feminization surgery. Your consultation is very important. And it is okay if you don't get the exact results that you want. But baby, when I tell you when you get it done, you will love the results. I'm telling you, you will absolutely love it. And also talk with your um, your surgeon about the process. That's what they're there for. They should be able to communicate with you and give you realistic expectations of what to expect from facial feminization surgery. My next step is to get breast augmentation. Going to sit and plan out some things um, for that one. Um, and yeah. But if you love this episode and if you've had gender affirming surgery um, of any type, please reach out to me, comment, leave me a review, tweet me, let me know about your experience. I want to hear your experience after gender affirming surgery. So I'm up out of here. Y'all live, love, and be free. Smooches.